I also want to welcome everybody to this virtual meeting. Could be the last one we have. We're seeing the governor's order expire at the end of this month. We don't know if they'll renew it. Um, and I'm glad that folks are able to join us. Uh, this being a virtual meeting, um, the meeting's being recorded, made available to the public no later than 48 hours after the meeting. Any action items decided by consensus at today's meeting will be reconfirmed at the next in person meeting of the committee, which is sort of a legal way of saying we can't do anything formal today. We'll have to reaffirm it later. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, as I'm taking roll call, we'll bring up the care group norms on the screen as well. Um, so for each committee member, let's see, I can see folks are present. Do I need to go through the list? Um, so if you just do a roll call of those committee members which are present, um, you don't have to do the, the full roster. All right. Well, let's see. Aaron, are you here? I am here. Let's see, John. I'm present, yes. Megan. Paul, I know you're going to be with us part of the time. Yes, I'm here. All right, Sarah. Sarah, and I'm here. Sarah. And Trey. Oh, well, you don't have to call staff. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm here, though. <laughs> <laughs> We're all glad to be here, but we, we technically don't count on the record. All right, I will now call for a motion that this meeting constitutes essential business of this body and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety and welfare of Tennesseans considering the COVID-19 outbreak and is permitted under the governor's executive order number 78. This is Aaron, I move. I second. Great, got it. Got it. Motion and second. Um, all right. If anyone has any comments on this motion, please raise your hand. Uh, if not, we'll go through the roll call. Um, let's see, Aaron. Yeah. yeah. John. Yay. Yeah. Megan. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Paula. Sarah. Sarah, 28. I'll never get your name right. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not intentional. I can't talk. Try, I don't need to call Trey. Okay, the motion passes. Um, we're looking at approval of the board's minutes. Um, does anyone have any questions or requests to changes? If not, I'll uh, ask for a motion to approve. Is there an I move? Megan, I second. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go through the roll again. Um, let's see Aaron. Yeah. John. Yay. Yay. Megan. Yay. Paula. Yay. I may have lost. Oh, Paula, you're still there. Yeah. Sarah. Yay. Oh, it's uh, All right. Sarah. Sarah. Um, and if it would be if it would be helpful, um, I could forward on some some materials about that. About the motion. Oh, no, about Sarah's name. Oh, okay. Just so um, we could all be on the same page. All right, and um, John, I guess you're gonna kick it off, right? Thank you, Will. Uh, just a point of technology. Grace, did you get the presentation that I sent you? I like just send it. So yeah. Do you have power then to share? Let me yeah, let me click over. 
I forgot I can't share in uh, WebEx. That was that was all. That was the only reason. Oh no worries. I was all set to do it too. <laughs> so I think for, your PowerPoint looks prettier than the one I would have had. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> all right. So friends, um, I don't want to take too much time out of the meeting um, as far as going over liberatory consciousness. Uh, I will say that my interest in this came about after uh, the collaboration that we just had uh, with, with the collaboration between Metro Arts and the porch with Power of the Pen and one of the facilitators that we work with uh, quite a bit, uh, Lori from Crossroads, Lori Adams kept saying that, oh, the fact that you're dealing with an art form and anti-racist work, um, that is a great example of liberatory imagination. I am a practicing artist. It's what I do for a living every single day. Um, and so I don't know that I'm necessarily taking for granted, but I said, um, she keeps talking about this. She keeps talking about this. I want to dive down. I want to dive deep down into more of this. And so what I'm going to share today and what we shared in the materials, if you had a chance to uh, look at those, um, is not novel, but it's about the focus of the imagination piece. Um, so let's go uh, next slide, please. Thank you, Grace. So there again, this is not new information. I don't think it is, at least not to me, it is not. I can't speak for everyone, but um, actually, yeah. So just basic, the four basic components. These are not, she is very clear to not call these stages. Um, as in, it's not a deal where you start at one place and then you graduate. It's a deal where it's situation by situation, um, system by system even. Um, so looking at awareness, uh, the idea of developing the capacity to notice, to give our attention to our daily lives, our language, our behaviors, even our thoughts. Um, a lot of times we talk a lot about what happens institutionally, but people make up institutions, people make up systems. So what happens uh, when people are actually employing this uh, thought and they're in coalition with each other? Um, analysis, I talk a lot about this, about the idea of uh, thinking about what needs to be done in a given situation. Is the reality of a situation consistent with our values of an equitable society? Um, I think that, that that's one reason why we're working on the equity lens here and while we've worked on the equity lens in this uh, committee um, and other tools um, and also why we consistently uh, invest in training. Um, what is the analysis of the individuals who are who are asked to be to perform this work? Uh, and then while we're speaking about performing action, deciding what needs to be done and doing it, uh, whether it's an individual or a group. And sometimes that also means encouraging others in power to leverage their positions. So action looks like a lot of different things, but um, being stuck in any of these stages too long can really hamper the work of liberation. Uh, and then looking at accountability and allyship, um, I'll table that. Uh, I, I personally have a, have a problem with the word ally. Um, I feel like it doesn't go far enough, but at the same time, just for the, the, um, for the benefit of this discussion, um, we're looking at this idea of how do we hold other, each other accountable from our varying positions of power, uh, managing the potential of perspective sharing between people or groups who exist slash operate on different ends of a spec of spectrums of power. And now when those perspectives of the group of the other group can serve as the critical energy to move things forward, liberation can be hampered if uh, that's a typo, if we withhold our perspectives from one another. So that means uh, speaking up, speaking out, understanding that we come together, if we're engaged in liberation work, which I count this as liberation work, if we're engaged in that in a coalition, then it is our responsibility to share our perspectives so that the work is not hampered. All right, uh, so I have questions for the group about this. Um, let's go to the next slide, Grace, thank you. 
what gets in the way of developing and employing a libertarian consciousness? And what's one thing that you would change about municipal government, this particular municipal government, that will require this type of approach? And I really want to be clear about this idea of liberatory consciousness in one degree is the acknowledgement that change has to happen and actually being able to imagine what that looks like after the change, as opposed to subtle, um, subtle um, edits to systems that are already broken. So I just want to put those two questions out and uh, turn it over to the group just for discussion, for brief discussion. What gets in the way of developing and employing a liberatory consciousness? And what's one thing that you would change about municipal government that will require this type of approach or thinking? Go ahead. Um, I think one way uh, that gets in you know, the way of a, of a liberatory consciousness is that because it is imagined, you know, so many of us are tactile or, you know, if we're, you, you know, we're used to basing our decisions on experiences and like, uh, you know, evidence-based, you know, like things that have already happened that we can prove. And this is, this is what is yet happened. This is the, where the artists come in. I mean, we should be good at this, <laughs> but I think that is what hampers because we're like, there's no precedent for this. There's no da da. We don't have a model, so that's. I think that's a consciousness, and I'll have you I'll come back to me about the change. But it's probably about where the leaping off point of where we have maybe a partial model, model or a half idea, and where we just need to take a leap of faith because it's our ideals, something like that. Thank you. This Janine. Is, sorry, this is Sara. Um, so I would say I appreciate John what you said about their issues when you get stuck in any particular part um, of the the model. So I feel like <clears throat> we, I say we collectively get stuck in awareness and analysis um, and don't move to action or allyship or um, accountability. Um, I think it's easy to easier to analyze to death a problem um, and be aware of a problem and talk about a problem and and think that that's action, but it's actually not action. We're just talking and building awareness. And um, <clears throat> so I feel like that's where we get stuck um, in or organizationally. And, um, and then, yeah, the second question, I mean, oh, yeah, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I feel like liberatory imagination like upends the entire idea of what government actually means and who it works for and all of all of that. What does service mean? What does it look like? Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't have real answers on that second question. Not not recognizing not recognizing our structures gets in the way. Um, you know, not not recognizing power that one may have or or not, um, and not you know, which kind of leads to other things. Not not helping or not not recognizing power in others um, or being supportive, uh, and um, you know, which I think for the second question might lead to more more democratic approaches uh, where where power is. Um, you know, share share it a little bit in some way. Anyone else? Anyone else for either question? Um, Can I just say one more thing? Please. Um, so I think the second question, now that I'm thinking about it, is I think government because it's government and you know we are taking money like taxpayers money and there's like this idea of real real like responsibility with that and fiscal responsibility and um government i think is often very fiscally conservative about a lot of things and doesn't want to be like an innovator um because that's a risk and so liberatory imagination though i think requires risk taking to some extent and trying things out and failing and 
going back and, and trying them again. And so I do think, what does it mean to shift the funding models of municipal government to allow for space to be less fearful of failing um, at something? Yeah, and I'd echo that thought. Um, I think government fears failure and you see corruption uh, and, and other things and there's these boundaries where there's just fear. Does it look like I'm benefiting a group and I have an interest in benefiting that group? Does it look like I'm wasting money? There's lots of fear uh, and um, I think you've really got to get over that and um, make sure that you're really thinking outside the box. And that's something that government doesn't do very well. Innovation. I think in, in thinking about that, um, you know, someone had mentioned like power structures and, uh, and, and thinking about this idea of innovation. I think 1 of the things that I would want to see changed is just the, a different. A, a larger amount of different kinds of people involved in government and, and in different levels of government. I think we've seen it um, led for a long time by a very particular demographic, a very particular mindset. And I think in order to embrace new types of thinking, we have to make space for a lot of a lot of differences and and also to be prepared for what that navigation of differences is going to look like. Um, so. I feel like we can take one more. Anyone else? Hi, John, I'll go. Um, Please. Thinking about the second question and, and also in the podcast, what was mentioned is that we can't get to this place unless everyone is taken care of. So it feels like affordable housing becomes part of the conversation. Our social services and all of the government systems have to work well. And I, I don't know, that just made me start thinking about, you know, we're Metro Arts, we're in the art space, but we can't really do this work well unless these other parts of the community are working. And yeah, I'm just thinking about all the other parts of this. Thank you, Caroline. That brings up what I've always said about schools. I've all, I mean, I've grown up here, I'm born and raised in Nashville, product of the public school system. And every time I would see schools publicly try to make an innovation, I would always think, this is great. This is great that you're rebranding all the middle schools. Are you going to do anything that addresses poverty? Are you going to do anything that addresses affordable housing? Are you going to do any, you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, I feel like things having to work in concert is one of the things that really gets in the way of government. Um, and I don't know what that is, but I definitely know that there's not enough uh, liberatory thinking I, in my opinion, being applied. So I don't know, uh, but I don't want to take up too much time. And even though, you know, it's not real. Uh, so uh, that was just for you, Grace. Thanks. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody. And um, if you haven't had a chance to read over her um, paper and also look over um, the podcast, uh, which Caroline mentioned, which we put in the materials, that's a grant makers podcast. That's a funding. That's a fun. So they're looking at this idea of what does it look like when it's applied to funding? What does it look like when it's applied to government? What does it look like when it's applied to education? Um, and just uh, very selfishly as an artist, I'm always thinking about what does this look like when it's applied to the structure of how we support artists and um, the larger arts ecosystem here. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, John. Uh, let's see, I think next on our agenda, Sara. Yep. So, yeah, thank you all. Um, so, actually, next person up on our agenda is Will on our care board training recommendations. So, the, the care board training recommendations were taken well. Um, and, um, Grace, remind me of the details. Um, so it was a unanimous vote. I believe the first was Commissioner Walker, who is the newest member of the Arts Commission, and the second was Commissioner Haynes. Um, and then I believe the only discussion um, was there was some question about 
in the future, if this resource becomes unavailable, what will be the steps? Um, and since we will be um, purchasing the access link, it should be evergreen. Um, so, you know, hopefully this body will be here to uh, make recommendations in that case, if for some reason, you know, the internet goes kaput. Um, and Commissioner Sheik, I can give updates on the, the staff's implementation process if you want. Well, let me just add in that Paul and I uh, both will continue to to uh, promote the Crossroads CNM training. Um, uh, there are a number of commissioners who have been through one or both of the in depth classes. Uh, I, I personally think they are tremendous. Uh, really changed the way that I I think about race, um, and I want to make sure. That you guys know that we're committed to trying to steer people to pay to do that. They have to pay on their own, but uh, we've got a lot of commissioners that have done that training and we'll push that on new commissioners too. I don't think we can require it, but we'll definitely strongly encourage and be a personal testimonial. Grace, sorry to interrupt. Not, not at all. Um, thank you for that. Um, and my sort of administrative update is very quick. Um, We've been in touch with Crossroads about um, access and sort of there's a there are varying group rates um, for the course. Uh, so we're working with them about how that works um, for like when we get new commissioners in the future. Um, and once we purchase a, a sort of bundle, it should be evergreen, um, you know, and I believe uh, our plan currently is after we finish procurement, if all of that you know goes through, um, then we'll offer it to the Arts Commission and to our committees. Uh, but I think unless anybody has questions or discussion, uh, that that's the end of the presentation portion of that. Yeah, does anybody have any questions or anything around that? Okay, cool. All right, um, next on our agenda is talking about our quarterly care retreat. Um, and so Trey, I'm gonna let you jump in. Thank you. Um, first of all, I just wanna apologize. I am feeling a little tired today from the COVID shot. So I'm, I'm here, but I'm like a little bit gone. So bear with me um, for my silence and kind of if I drift off a little bit. But um, yeah, so we, wanted to talk about scheduling our next care retreat, um, keeping in mind that the executive order for virtual meetings um, would be kind of ending uh, the 20, 28th or 27th, I believe. Um, so if that was something we wanted to fit in, we would have to kind of squeeze it in here pretty soon. Um, I think one date that we talked about was the 24th um, of this month, kind of doing the same uh, Saturday morning kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I think understandably, this is very short notice for that date. Um, but I think we could also do something, um, you know, we could plan for a, a you know, a, a rain check plan if we do extend the, um, the date or, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if in person is something that you all are, are wanting to consider at this point. Um, but yeah, just kind of keeping that in mind. Um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of opening up the discussion if if does that date work for anyone? Is that kind of way too soon? Um, yeah, what are what are people Trey, Can you say the date 1 more time? I think April 24th, um, which is like in 2 weeks. What are people's thoughts Wait. around that? I, I can't do the 24th. I have, I have an, I have NLC all day mm -hmm. on the 24th. So there's no way. All right, cool. Well, we can try and find. So when is the cutoff tray for um, virtual meetings at this point? Is it the end of this month? It's the 28th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, okay. does anybody have a relatively large piece of property where we could spread out outside under a tree or something? And if it rained, we would call a meeting. I don't quite have enough property. Because that, I mean, that would be a good backup for virtual. Yeah, um, I believe Centennial Park also has a nice pavilion space. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think uh, like we could do Centennial Park. Um, I would have to do a little bit of math in terms of social distancing, but I might have enough space with my backyard um, and I'm relatively central. Uh, I'm just off of, yeah, so. Um, so it's still comfortable enough as long as we were distancing outside to meet if we had to meet in person. I believe, do we have to meet in a public metro building? Or, I, or do we as a committee have to? I don't know. I believe it has to be a public space. Um, so I, I would have to check with uh, Derek, our lawyer, but it, it may come down to Megan, the possibility of strangers getting to come into your backyard. Um, Wow, talk about liberatory. It's the, the rules, right? <laughs> so um, you're saying, do committees have to be open to the public? I think as there'll be two yeah. commissioners there, then yeah, it'll have to be yeah. publicly noticed and everything. Because it's a public meeting. All right. So I guess we could do the park might be the best idea then. Yeah, I, I would be curious to see if the park would fall under that. Um, yeah. I'll I'll bring I'll bring the the hot dog. Someone else can bring the chip. <laughs> Grace, so could you maybe? Be... <laughs> Sorry, Sora. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Uh, so maybe next steps, Grace. If you want to look into just like the nuances around that, um, if we're allowed to meet in a private mm -hmm. citizen board uh, committee members out home um, or not, and then maybe we can look at dates. Then in May, if people are feeling comfortable with doing a socially distanced outdoor meeting instead, does that? seem to work for folks. Okay, seeing head nods. Okay, yeah. so um, maybe we can do that. The only thing I will throw in for consideration, um, and we, Caroline really thoughtfully brought this up uh, last time, and um, see, Janine, Trey, and I talked about it, and we can make space. Um, I will say we will be going into grant season Thrive overhaul, uh, this, that, and the other. Um, so if we want to push it later, we are open to that. But yeah, we could also do May. Um, when would be ideal for staff? Like, when is the? Is it May when it's like your really busy month, or when is when is that? May June. Okay. I want to say. Okay. Um. So. I feel like if we just need to go ahead and do this, I think we'll all, we all agreed we'd be fine to do that. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, just in regards to grant panels, I mean, they're done. Uh, we're just going to have two um, virtual ones um, that we that first week of May. Um, so honestly, just as long as it's after that, um, that that's like the biggest part. I mean, it's a busy time, but it's, not terribly, terribly busy, maybe towards <laughs> mid May. Yeah, like mid to end, May, end of May. Yeah, I keep forgetting it's just core this year. <laughs> that makes it a lot different. <laughs> um, and Trey, I know you have a couple projects coming to fruition, but I think we can we can start with mid to late May. Cool. Yeah, maybe, I think yeah. by mid May, like, I think the week of the 10th after that week, um, I shouldn't have, I don't know if that would be good. I think the 10th through the, the 15th. So yeah, af just after mid May or mid May sometime would work. Would it be helpful for maybe care team members to look at their calendars, like the mid, like the later half of May to see what dates they're not available and then we can send out a doodle based on that, or should we just send out a doodle? Um, and are we thinking like the weekend, or can we do a weekday as well? What are people's think, thoughts around that? I was gonna say, if we can, the doodle poll I sent. Oh, sorry. Well, I was gonna say if we can do a Saturday morning, that's obviously that's preferable for some. Um, that that yeah. seemed to work well for the committee last time. It did. Yeah, yeah, I would have a hard time trying to do a weekday. Okay, that's good to know. I think we just got to keep in mind, right? Memorial Day weekend is also that last weekend, so that will be a 
on weekend, I might be knocked out because people might be out of town. So, um, but yeah, we've got then two, two days to work with and we can look at that. Yeah, the 15th and the 22nd. In fact, I'll go ahead and book those two on my calendar. So okay. I don't book anything else. Cool. Thank you, Will. John, I see you trying to jump in. <laughs> you got that face. I'm, I'm toggling between my calendar and this screen. Uh, I can't do the 22nd, but I can, because that's NLC for May, but uh, I can do the weekend prior. The 15th. Yeah. Does everyone just want to look at their calendars right now? And see, yeah. so are you all free on the 15th? I, I may not be free on the 15th. Um, okay. I apologize, but. Okay. Cool. I'm going to jump in real quick. It's Paula. Um, we said that we wanted to do these every quarter. So if we can't all be together in May, maybe we look at June. Yeah. Um, I do sense. I will say the dutiful I sent out with the meeting materials. Um, I just went a bit extra and it goes through July. Um, so if we still want to use that, um, to kind of fill out the dates. I just went long range just because who knows what's happening. Thank you, Grace. Yeah, sorry about that. We can, we, we will use that as our, as our doodle for figuring out the retreat date. So if May doesn't work, maybe we can just look at the June and July date for everybody to fill that out. Okay. Fantastic. And I can resend that because I know it got pushed down the thread. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or thoughts around the retreat? Hey, so one of the things I would love for us to keep in mind is um, if we can come out of the retreat with not just some inspiration, but some specific action items that we can work on implementing in the, in the course of the rest of the year, that would be, in my mind, really helpful for the group. Um, we're not going to change the world, obviously, this year. But if we can change some things, I would love to see us come out of that meeting energized and ready to make the arts a more equitable uh, field in Nashville. Absolutely. Um, that's a, a, a great goal. And I, I think we can make that a part of the agenda is, you know, making sure that there's a, a time for us to review and, and say clearly, okay, these are our next steps, our marching orders. Um, and I know Janine and Grace and I have discussed the agenda, and I think there's some um, things that we'll want to put together um, as staff. And then, um, but if anyone does have, you know, particular input, I think we do have some time as well to come back uh, and, and bring that here to this space um, and review and discuss. Yeah, yeah I think you. John captured it really well when he said, what would you change? Yeah. Thank you. And I will say, you know, at our last retreat, we came up with the um, uh, racial equity assessment tool, you know, so we've, we're moving forward on that. So that's definitely a big action that we can continue revising and revisiting, which is exciting. So, all right. Any other thoughts? Any other final thoughts on the retreat? Okay, cool. All right, next up is our um, communications policy planning um, around input on agency response to racial violence. And this is Grace and Janine. Thanks, everyone. Um, uh, Emily, our uh, communication specialist, provided us with some notes and thoughts. So um, I'll be sharing a lot of that with you now, just, just kind of a summary. And then we'll put um, her actual statement up on the uh, arts public for everyone. So basically, um, you know, staff has had conversations um, about how how do we respond to um, acts of racism, acts of trauma um, um, in the community. And so uh, this was um, sparked, this latest conversation was sparked by the shootings in Atlanta um, that included uh, six women of Asian descent um, and that took place in Asian owned businesses. So um, kind of a guiding question that Emily posed um, and that we all discussed was, how does Metro Arts show up in response to events like this? How and what do we want to communicate? Um, also, um, you know, what what is the community um, looking towards us to provide? And so, um, this last, you know, 
think last week uh, we were able to share um, some resources. Um, you know, we looked at some of the responses from uh, GIA, Grants Makers in the Arts, and AFTA. Um, and so from you all, from CARE, from this body, um, we would like, um, it would be helpful to get a framework of response messaging or maybe some guiding principles or ideas about how to, like just how to, again, like guiding us up how to respond, not like necessarily a template of things, you know, or a blanket statement, but just like, just guiding principles, um, uh, you know, you know, if or some sort of like a, a temp, like a, I guess like a, I guess there could be like a base uh, template or a standing message, um, but I think guidelines would be preferable or like a policy statement. Um, and there is a precedent for having um, standing crisis communication ready um, in Metro. So we do have crisis um, communication uh, messaging for things like natural disasters. Um, also, incidents specifically for the arts, incidents um, involving our public art collection, et cetera. Um, and so, um, you know, we 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 need we would like guidance about this. Um, so, some of the thoughts um, or challenges that um, you know, as the communication specialist Emily considers, are that um, she doesn't want to um, put all of the um, the labor on any community members or staff who are directly um, experiencing the trauma or are some or uh, directly impacted. However, I added, you know, but there should be some sort of communication or inclusion. So again, not making it the decision of the, you know, of, you know, of the, the people impacted, you know, the, whether or not, um, you know, they would like to be involved um, or have their, um, you know, their voice um, and, and uh, experiences shared. And um, let's see what else. Um, and so, yeah, we are just currently compiling a list of resources. Um, I think that an easy like mechanism for this, like we can easily create like a Monday um, form that's to organize, you know, a developing database of resources ongoing um, and we can share that with you all. Um, and then, you know, this, and this, um, some of the resources would be kind of updated regularly and live live on the website. And so as part of our, any of this messaging, we could always shift back to this, um, you know, this body of work and resources that we are constantly collecting and, and reviewing um, and deepening. And so, um, yeah, so next steps, um, we know we probably um, can't, you know, figure out the messaging or the guidelines right now, but if we could plan on um, talking more about this either at the retreat or at the next um, working group meeting, um, that would be great. And then again, just to reiterate the topics for discussion, just um, how do we show up and those guiding principles. So that's it. And Grace, am I, am I missing anything from staff discussions? No, I don't think so. That was really beautifully said, Janine. Um, I will just say that um, Emily wanted to be here, um, but had a, a child related conflict. So she is definitely um, absolutely open to and interested in being a part of these discussions, but that would also be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you, Grace and Janine. Um, I do want to say also Emily was in the power of the pen. She was a participant in that as well with the porch and she was great. So um, I did have like something just you know, I, I'm curious if everyone, if anyone has questions or um, feedback on what y'all are sharing. I mean, I wonder also if we could serve as a resource in terms of, um, you know, if you create communication, like, and you want to get it in front of community members' eyes, but don't want to just burden other community members that might be directly impacted. I mean, we're here as a community um, group, so just wanted to offer that. Um, maybe we can talk about that more. So. Um, but yeah, I don't know if do does anybody else have questions or thoughts around what Janine and Grace shared? Cool. Yeah, um, and maybe we can think about. I know we have. Um, if our next retreat isn't until June, then we can also then, like you said, Janine, talk about it in one of our working group meetings um, around. We have external and internal communication, so. Would definitely would fit into that space. So cool. Um, I did maybe another question then around that. <laughs> um, so I guess what's the criteria, or is, I guess this is what's being developed of when you feel like you need to respond as a body. 
that's exactly it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and when, and, um, you know, I think that was part of, that's part of, you know, one of the, the media stories that's out about this particular, you know, incident, it's that, you know, the silence and that says something as well. And so I think we just need to talk through that as a group and like use the equity lens too. I mean, just those guiding principles and those guiding questions to, to work on this next policy or, or group of guidelines. So. Cool. Thank you, Janine. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions for Gina or Grace, um, thank you all. Um, so our next agenda topic is um, the strategic plan. Um, and so Caroline. Hello, uh, thank you. I just want to give a quick update. The strategic plan for Metro Arts, the RFP is uh, live out in the world finally on the procurement website. And we have the direct link if you should want to find it because it's not easy to, to locate sometimes. Um, and we've also shared it in our you know, social media arts alert. Um, we've also uh, sort of staff developed and I think you know we ask you guys as well to provide any consultants who might want to hear about it because it is a little bit hard to find if you're not familiar. So we've sent out direct emails um, to a lot of you know groups and, and places. So it's certainly out there. The original plan was for it to close on this Friday, the 9th, but it looks like that's going to be pushed out another week just due to some technical things that are going on with the system that procurement runs. So um that is all still open um we i did want to ask there is a precedent for having an evaluation committee for each procurement that we do and that can be it's typically just staff but i've sort of asked the question if we could have external um participation in that so i am going to move forward some names to the purchasing agent to see if we can get approval for that so i wanted to just move that forward to this group to see if there are any, um, if we could elect at least one um, person from this uh, care group to be on that evaluation panel. It, um, I don't have control over it, so it does have to get approved by the purchasing agent, but I will be moving those names forward um, later this week. And we will have you know some staff, probably a commissioner, so it probably can't be a commissioner uh, of care. Um, and then maybe someone else sort of in the Metro space who's familiar with our work, but also familiar with, you know, how procurement works. Um, the ask is that, you know, once the RFP closes, there's probably like, you know, three or four days or so that the staff in procurement has to get the materials sorted and make sure everything is, um, you know, set up and everyone's eligible that's applied and they've done what they're supposed to do. And then they would provide those materials, um, you know, probably a week after the deadline and then set a meeting sometime within that next week or two to, you know, sort of evaluate the, um, the bidders. So that is the, I would say the time commitment really depends on how many people apply or how many, you know, consultants or consultant teams apply. And I wouldn't, I mean, I would say, depending on your, you know, how, how quickly you go through it. I'm guessing an hour to two hours just reviewing the materials and then probably an hour or hour, half, two hours in the meeting to sort of go through the materials and do the scoring with procurement. So that is the ask if anyone, I don't know how we want to handle that. Um, Sarah, as far as like asking for volunteers or you can email me or you'll, you can decide amongst yourselves um, and then I'll try to get those over to procurement later this week. Thank you, Caroline. Um, does anybody, I mean, we can do that. Does anybody feel compelled or feel like they really want to volunteer with um, this process? And if you do, feel free to say so now. Um, this is Megan. I would be interested in a little bit more, like knowing a little bit more about that process. So, cool. Caroline, do you think you could, I mean, I know you just shared like a little bit about it, but um, is there something you maybe could share like just what the process might look like or how that's worked in the past? And we could just share it out even to like, you know, people that weren't here. So Jonathan and Alandis and other folks too, of just making sure people know what the ask is and then we can um, see who's interested. Definitely. Yes, I can pull that all together and send out tomorrow to the whole group and yeah. then we can go from there. Okay. Carolyn, when do you need to know by? Like when um, do you need to have that confirmed? Uh, they're asking for it now ish, but I think I can. <laughs> okay. 
if, if uh, I mean, especially if they're pushing the deadline out. So if it's, um, you know, by Friday or Monday, if, if at the latest, if we could okay. um, at least get who's interested and then um, go from there. And I would say, uh, just make sure you don't have a conflict if that's possible. Like if, if you, you know, just don't have, you can't have like a fin financial relationship with anyone who's bidding or be a part of a team that's bidding, that kind of stuff. So um, they're, yeah, just to make sure we don't have any conflicts of interest. Great. Okay, yeah, so we can, we'll do that next. Um, so that sounds good. All right, thank you, Caroline. Um, anybody have any questions about that, by the way? Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, our next topic is just, does anybody have anything else that we um, need to discuss um, that we haven't, or that wasn't on the agenda? Um, you can share it now. I guess I will update. I know we talked about in our um, internal working group about the um, caucusing and, and kind of affinity spaces that we have. And that is something that we did kind of follow up with in um, our staff meeting this week. Um, so we are going to, you know, for this next go around, I'm hoping to kind of try to start the ball rolling with, you know, finding a shared topic or something to discuss uh, in, in both spaces so um, we can kind of come back. So. Uh, I think that was, it's just kind of reporting out. That was something we talked about and identified in, um, our working group and, and we are kind of moving towards action in that space. Um, so yeah, that's just something brief, but no, something no. to share. That's great. Trey. Thank you. I mean, I guess I had a question just broadly, um, around the equity lens, um, where are we at with that now? Um. Yeah, just where are we at? Are we at the process of we're still um, fleshing it out? And as a group, we need to look at the edits and make like approve it to move it forward. Um, yeah, so I'm just curious. And if not only staff has to answer this, but I don't know if any other um, committee members have thoughts around that. So um, our understanding, staff, I mean, my understanding, and you know, I think our staff understanding was that we would take the draft we have right now, including all the you know different notes. And then um, basically try to apply it um, to our current, um, you know, uh, guess, yeah, redesign or like the editing of our FY22 Thrive guidelines. So, and then kind of report back of like, okay, so this is what we used and these are some of the questions. I thought it was more of like a user experience, you know, and kind of what were the results of going through it and how how this now reflects into Thrive. That was my understanding of like where we left off for from the last working meeting. But do you all just want like the the standing edits from the last working group meeting? Like uh what's what's needed now? But I think we could probably present the where where we're at with um staff wise is uh we've taken the equity lens and our ideas for Thrive FY22. Um, and met with like the different teams in Metro Arts, so public art team, finance and operations, you know, Emily um, as communications and um, and Caroline. Um, and so we've kind of turned those through and related some of our, you know, the thoughts we're thinking of via the equity lens and how they relate to these new changes in Thrive. Um, and I think we're on to uh, the very beginning stages of now like digging into those Thrive guidelines. Um, and so I think the plan, my understanding was like, we kind of bring both back to, to care. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be, and it'll probably be in May because we'll want to um, get those in front of grants and funding committee as well. And then the arts commission after that. So that's, yeah. I think, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's cool, Janine. Yeah, I was just okay. wondering where it was in the process and, and just yeah. where we were around, around all of that. So that's, that's a good update. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or anything they want to bring up? Sorry. I just want to give Janine props for coordinating this whole process. She's been amazing at drawing in all the different staff perspectives and sort of weaving it into this great tapestry. So, yeah, Janine. Awesome. Cool. Well, if there's nothing else um, to discuss right now, we can go ahead and move to the working group updates. Um, so, who would like to go first? Feel free to unmute. Uh, 
Um, and I will also share uh, that we included the working group updates in the care report this time as like the preface. Um, and that may be more on the staff update side, but I would love y'all's opinions on whether that worked, whether it needed to be two separate documents. Um, but yeah, and I can definitely share that too, if that would be helpful. Yeah, thank you, Grace. Yeah, any thoughts around that? We can also email you and to let you know what we, we think about it too. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, so anybody who is from the external uh, communication community, I know Ellen and Ellen's on that and she's not here. Um, I wasn't able to make the last meeting and I'm on that team. Um, i trying to think Paula, I think was on that too, but I know she had a pop off. So there might might not be anybody from our team here. Um, uh, I think it was Megan and I. Was that is that the right one? Or maybe I'm confused. Okay, that's correct. Um, and okay. I can talk a little bit about that. Um, essentially, we just worked on um, taught, had a discussion about the spreadsheet uh, to kind of lay out relationships and partners to identify where there are existing relationships with the community, what the relationships are like, and um, where the gaps are to try to look at that. Um, we talked about uh, reviewing and um, kind of relooking over the community analysis and interviews from the very early work that CARE has done back when we were um, art, and to see if and how those relationships have changed. Um, we talked about um, reviewing data from the mapping project that the data clinic in Two Sigma is doing with Metro. And we talked about the rubric for evaluating relationships and pro um, projects and specifically to look at um, different characteristics of types of relationships in order to um, have a tool for staff to kind of evaluate where they are in the relationship process. So that's that's what we got. Thanks, Megan. I realized I was in that too. I just the last few weeks have been a blur. So I appreciate that. Um, anybody have any questions about any of that? What oh, Megan shared. Okay, cool. Um, and the other working group, um, we had our internal one as well. Um, anybody from that group want to share? Yep, I can share about that. So um, we uh, we are looking at kind of two. Uh, two main ideas, really, um, kind of looking at a, an institutional gap of where, um, you know, where where to have conversations around race uh, and and other equity uh, issues as they arise. Like, you know, I think right now, um, uh, I don't know if it's policy, but the um, Kind of understood notion is that if if something happens, you know, staff staff goes at any level goes to HR, um, and you know we were wondering if maybe HR. We talked a little bit about kind of the function of HR, and you know, not just not just within Metro, but just broadly HR and kind of what the function of HR is, and you know, maybe these conversations aren't um, that's not really kind of in their purview necessarily. And so, what are what are the spaces that we can we can open up to have those conversations? Um, uh, you know, with 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 I don't know with entities that might be a little more equipped to have those conversations. I guess I would say. Um, so we talked a little bit about that, and I think we have still have a little bit more conversation to have around that. Um, and then, as Trey mentioned, we also talked about. Um, staff caucusing process and and kind of what that might look like. And um, I think in our next meeting, Trey will definitely be uh, interested in hearing more about kind of what your what what you have in mind and are kind of working working towards on that. Sorry, I, I jumped the gun a little bit on that, but no, you're good. <laughs> awesome, cool. Thank you, Aaron, and thanks, Trey, for yeah the early update. Um, anyone have any questions for Aaron? Or that team. Cool. Okay. Um, and I realize I'm on the training uh, working group, and John is not here, and Paula is also is also on our team, um, and she's not here as well. So, um, our update was really that we finalized uh, the 
the training that we were going to be providing or would recommend to the board. Um, and so we really decided that that was the way we wanted to move forward um, and confirm which one we wanted to move forward on. Um, so that was really our big action that we took. Um, and we also really wanted to make clear that that training is just one piece of like a, hopefully a larger um, journey. Um, and that doing that training, that video is not an end all be all, but, um, you know, if there are other opportunities to attend a crossroads training in person or virtually, you know, online um, that we encourage that as well. So, um, the, the video is really kind of a baseline to get us all speaking the same language. So, yeah, um, any questions around that um, where we're at around the trainings. Okay, cool. All right, uh, so next up really is a staff update. Which I think y'all kind of definitely gave us a few, but. Yeah, I think if anybody has any questions about what was in the care report, we're happy to answer them, but I don't know if I have any updates beyond that. Does anybody have any questions? Not seeing any. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we don't have any questions. So thank you all for putting that together. Really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, now I'll turn it over back to Will. Well, Sarah, thank you so much. And I've mispronounced your name enough where you can just make up a name for me. I'm known as Chicken Little in my liquor group because I worry about things that I shouldn't worry about. I'm cheeky monkey. Uh, if you don't want to come up with a new one, please do. I definitely am owed it. I apologize. Our next meeting is scheduled for May 5, 5 to 6.30 p.m. It is possible that we will not be able to meet virtually. and We'll get an update on that. Uh, and if we can't, we are going to do everything we can to make the meeting safe. Um, and we're also working on a retreat date. I've got two dates blocked off. Uh, so let's see. I think this completes the business of the meeting. Is there anything else that we need to cover? All right, the next meeting, we'll take a motion on what you guys are going to call me. Uh, in all seriousness, thanks, guys. Y'all have a great evening. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Congrats, by the way, Will. I don't know if they said that already. Well, yeah, I'm absolutely. Trying to hey, get thank in. you. I'm the lucky one. <laughs> Congrats, Will. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. There you go.